Hey, Redemption family. Uh, Jeff and Christine here. If uh, you're watching this, then you are likely not at our Family Sunday gathering. Uh, we filmed this video because we don't live stream on Family Sundays because we're sitting around tables having conversations. And uh, so this is an opportunity for you to be included in the flow of the week and to follow along with us as we are engaged together as a family, kind of processing through what we've been exploring and how we've been formed so far this month as we've been in the book of Ecclesiastes yeah. and continuing on with this theme of when life doesn't make sense. So we're gonna um, talk a little bit about what you would otherwise experience here on Sunday morning here and hope that prompts some conversations with you, your family, friends, wherever you're at today. Yeah, and before we jump into kind of our discussion about how we've been processing and being formed by this particular book and study, uh, I want to share a little bit of family business, things that we have coming up. So just right away, coming this Sunday on uh, May 21st, so it might even be the day that you're watching this, there is a preventing gun violence dialogue happening at Oak House Church. Uh, in the evening from 5.30 to 7.30. That's a church that's hosting uh, this dialogue with several other churches engaging and an organization called Matthew 5.9 really focused on what does it mean to be peacemakers if we are walking in the way of Christ? How do we do that in the particular time and place that we are existing? Uh, so I invite you to participate in that uh, conversation and it's gonna be an ongoing thing. And so um, if you're someone prone toward action, uh, I would invite you into that. It won't just be a conversation. And also we have um, some things coming up for the gals. So we have a women's worship and prayer gathering after service on June 4th. So we'll have our exploration Sunday in the morning and then immediately after service, grab your lunch on your own and take it over to the McPhee's house where we'll be gathering for some time to worship together uh, as sisters in Christ. Um, so I invite you into that. And then summer is coming up. It's just around the corner and we've been working on some things. The most immediate thing is to get your children, if you have them registered for Vacation Bible School, which is gonna be June 26th through the 30th. And we're gonna end that with a like all church family pizza night um, on Friday the 30th. Everyone's invited to that. And then camp is coming up for our kids going into um, third grade and up. And that's going to be July 21st through the 23rd. So if you haven't yet registered uh, your children, I encourage you to do that. If you're interested in being a counselor at our camp, we're still looking for a couple people and would invite you to jump in. Um, and that is going to be a really fun time. And it's always been a special season together as a church family. Um, so those are some of the things coming up that I encourage you to participate in and think about who you might want to invite to join you in that. Uh, and we're looking forward to a good, good summer together. Yeah. Uh, always a little bit of a different rhythm, but fun, fun times. Yeah. So, speaking we, of summer, speaking let's of talk summer, about how life's good times. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, what I love about Ecclesiastes is I think it really does help us get to that there is some meaning yeah, in it, yeah. and that even, um, you know, I love the passage that we looked at this last week, where it just talks about eat, drink, and find satisfaction mm -hmm. in your toil. Like it yeah. comes to this place of like, enjoy your life yeah, and be yeah. present to what God's doing in yeah. that moment. And I think that I, on Sunday I mentioned like, I wanted it to be more than that in some mm -hmm. ways, but I think it's really mm -hmm. those like simple truths that keep giving us so much more to go back to and really yep. sit with of like, what does it mean that God is like in yeah, any given yeah. moment? Yeah, and I, I even appreciate, and we joke about the meaninglessness and yeah. how that's translated. I just, I appreciate it even the um, analysis of that word and just mm. that idea of Hevel as being like the, the vapor or the breath and kind of reframing it from meaninglessness into more of a, oh, this is a short time frame. This is a, mm. this is just a breath that we live in. This is just a vapor, this life. And so what does it look like to find meaning within that? And then tracking back, you know, Beth mentioned this and just even you know, like you following up on that this last week, this idea of, um, I wrote down, I don't think either of you said this, but this is my like summary of yeah, this is the it. idea of withness mm -hmm. and how, um, I mean, Beth was talking about the vapor or the breath and then how like the breath of God like uh, em, uh, gives us energy and embodies us and allows us to co-create with God. Mm. And I, I just wrote down this idea of with God, like withness and the presence and practicing that presence. And right, it's it's not some 
it shouldn't be some massively profound thing, but it, it is because I think we often try to make yeah. our spiritual lives like some, you know, some magic formulas or some complicated thing. And it really just goes back to like, what does it look like to just be with God and to be present with God and to acknowledge God's presence with us and yeah. then um, walk with God. Yeah. It makes me think too of just like the childlike faith of, mm. um, you know, how sometimes you, we talk a lot about like going through something and coming out the other side of it. And I think there is a sense of wrestling with someone, with something and then mm. coming out the other side with the simplicity of it. And, and like, you know, Jesus said, like, unless you can have a childlike faith, you don't yeah. really like understand what's going yeah. on. And I think anytime I land on those like profound, simple truths, I think of that, like, mm -hmm. oh, there's a, and I think there's a childlikeness to the delight, to the enjoyment of yeah, life, yeah. like that it's okay to, that there's an invitation even mm. to enjoy the moment. Yep. You know? Well, and that's another big theme that kept coming up and that we were even wrestling with in our community group last night is this idea of what does it look like to be content, to enjoy walking with God, to, to enjoy mm. creation, to enjoy all the good things that God has provided for us. And then also, not a but, but also um, it, recognize that suffering will come and mm -hmm. that suffering is with us and that suffering gives us this uh, pro probably the most profound opportunity to be formed and to be transformed and to care for each other and to walk with God in, in new and different ways. And it's just, you know, a lot of times I think we think about that, oh, I should be content. And then, and then it's like, oh, but should I strive for suffering? Mm -hmm. And I think there's this opportunity to wrestle with the both and of those. Yeah. Well, and that goes back to the famous passage in Ecclesiastes about the seasons, mm -hmm. right? And yeah, I was thinking about time. with the witness too of how we're, there's a recognizing that God is with us and mm. also then like being with one another in the different seasons of life and yep. like what it means to be a church family or to be those who are caring for others in our mm -hmm. community. There's this sense that I often like when I'm experiencing something, I want everyone else to be in it with me, mm -hmm. you know, but or especially if there's like this understanding of like, oh, it's all about like surrendering and laying it all down where someone else might be yeah. learning a lesson about it's time to pick something up or yeah, grab onto yeah. it. And I find like, I'm like this with people right, sometimes. Right. Yep. And I've been learning to ask kind of the question of like, what's the Lord showing you in mm. this season? Yeah. Instead of just, I, I've, this has happened to me and I've done it to people where I've like corrected their mm -hmm. theology almost, but it's <laughs> like, well, no, both are true. Like yeah. you said, there's yeah. like a both and it's just, I might be experiencing a particular truth in this time and yeah. I can learn from what you're going through in your season. And so right, right. I'm trying to learn to ask better questions about where sure. people are at and what God's showing them in that moment mm -hmm. and be with them in that, even if that's like different than yes. maybe where God I has me. Yeah. I love that idea of, you know, we talked about being the body together and everybody has their own different part of the body that mm -hmm. they play or the strengths that they bring, spiritual gifts they bring to the table. And that this idea kind of corresponds with that in this like overlapping of seasons that we're yeah. in and that we don't always have to be all in the same season at the same time. In fact, it's, it's better mm -hmm. when we aren't because then those of us that are experiencing abundance and harvest and peace and centeredness can support those and yeah. that are walking in times of significant pain and suffering. Yeah. And then when that changes, <laughs> we, we hope that changes, you know, for both so that yeah. we can go through these seasons of learning and growth and, and formation in different ways and new ways and that we can constantly be supporting and upholding each other. Yeah. 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 It's always fun kind of <laughs> like pulling it apart some more right. together. Thanks. Yeah. So that's some of what we're experiencing in our own conversations with our community groups. And uh, as just we're exploring this topic and this idea of being with God uh, even when life doesn't make sense. And so we hope that that's some prompting for you to have some conversations, you know, internally with yourself, with your friends, with your family at home, and that we can continue to uh, become formed in the way of Christ. Um, we talked about in our formation practice this last week this idea of repentance and it's simply just turning mm -hmm. away from those things that would distract us or that would keep us from orienting ourselves toward Christ and 
walking back toward Christ and then walking with Christ. And so that's our prayer. It's our hope for you today is that you would be uh, turning and returning and walking with Christ so that um, God can really equip you and form you and give you strength this week. Thank you.